This is the A Show of the series of a brand new radio series. From Hollywood, we present the Stan Freeberg Show. With the music of Billy May. Plus the songs of Peggy Taylor with Dawes Butler, June Beret, Peter Leeds, and the Judd Conlon Rhythm Airs. You may not find us on your TV. Because in case you did not know, we're being brought to you on. Brought to you on. Brought to you on our ADI. Thank you very much. And to start us off tonight, we've invited back for the second time on our show, the Zazaloff family. As we told you, they're Swiss. This way, we didn't offend anyone. <laughs> this is probably one of the finest acrobatic acts in the business, and rather a novelty on radio. Ladies and gentlemen, the Zazaloff family! <laughs> Here they go, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, this is magnificent to see. I wish you could see it. And they're bouncing up in the air. Look at that. Why, he's holding him up in the air by one. Hey! Very good. And now wearing purple tights. And look at that. My goodness, that's amazing. Eighteen men, ladies and gentlemen, on one end of a... Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Now on the way to the show, um, <laughs> Hey, uh, Stan? Well, what is it, Dawes Butler, as they say in radio? Uh, what are we gonna do next? Well, I'll tell you, Dawes, I was wondering the other day. Wondering what? How the good humor man stand it. Can you imagine driving an ice cream truck around all day long, let alone all summer long, with the same song flailing you about the ears? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. How often do they change that song, I wonder? I don't know. Gee, those chimes are driving me nuts. Yeah, what song do you hear most often? Uh, London Bridge is Falling Down. How about you? I hear London Bridge quite a bit. Uh, Pop Goes the Weasel is very big on our street. <laughs> let's, let's write a screenplay about it, okay? Okay, and uh, let's have the titles appear on ice cream bars. That's good, that's good. <laughs> Twentieth Century Freeberg presents <laughs> Uninterrupted Melody. This is the story of men in uniform, their loves, their hopes, their dreams, and of the task to which they have so devoted their lives. Yes, to that gallant corps of heroes, the good humor men of America, is this picture respectfully dedicated. Do you know what it's like after having a day off with the family to try to sleep on the night before you report back for action? Do you know what it's like to lie there and live with fear? Charlie Krasmeyer knows. Charlie, what are you doing? I'm lying here living with fear. <laughs> well, try and get some sleep, sweetheart. Yeah, yeah. I'm just lying here thinking about tomorrow. Well, you just mustn't lie there thinking about tomorrow. Tomorrow, it's Pop Goes the Weasel and... <laughs> Hundreds of grimy little hands reaching out for ice cream bars. <laughs> Walter Yoder cracked up last week. <laughs> I, I saw him when he took him away, Sue. It... It wasn't pretty. <laughs> oh, hush. Hush. Are you sorry you married a good humor man? <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Are you sure? No? <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't just the glamour of the uniform and all? Charlie. Charlie, I'd love you whether you had that white coat or not. <laughs> Yes, men like Charlie Krasmeyer know their job is no easy one, but they live with it, 
and they report for duty every day at the plant where their boss, the Chief Commander F.C. Barr, is just now entering the building. He opens the door and confronts a small, bald man with horn-rimmed spectacles who looks up from the piano. Green? Uh, morning, Commander. Yes, what's going on around here? That's all I want to know, Green. I heard one of our trucks over in Westwood playing hound dog. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, FC. Listen, I had that truck taken out of service immediately. Nursery songs, that's all I want to hear. They don't cost us anything. <laughs> but, FC, the men get punchy from nursery songs. They're cracking up out there. Cracking up, you say nonsense. Every American loves nursery songs. Besides, they're free. <laughs> yeah, but... Maybe you'd like to go back to television and write briar patch leg jingles. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. That's my sore spot. <laughs> Say, here's a little thing I've been working on this morning. Now, how does this strike you? <clears throat> the three little kittens, they lost their mittens and they began to cry. Meow! Meow! Wait a minute. Meow! Hold me. it. Hold it. Sure you aren't using a Costellanus arrangement? <laughs> Positive. It's good. Ah, uh, yes. By one of our more enthusiastic salesmen, I see. A cute board for three days now. He came in last week. Get him out of here. Take him out. He's too enthusiastic. Get him out. From the, uh, from the acute ward, you say? Yeah, poor devil. I know him. His name is Heinegger. <laughs> he had the nerve to ask me to take him off London Bridge and put him on Yankee Doodle two weeks ago. But he had a month to go yet. That's a trouble with labor today. Wishy-washy. <laughs> that's right, F.C. You bet that's right. Now get back to work. I got an employee pep meeting in five minutes. <clears throat> This is the briefing room where every morning 200 white-coated good humor men sit glumly staring into space, horribly calm, not daring to think about the day ahead of them, only anxious to get the job done. All righty, men. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you for that splendid ovation. <laughs> let's stand up and sing our little song now, and let's sing it like we were in a good humor, eh? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> humor, humor. Yes, we are good humor. That is not no rumor. Yay, bo. Music, music. How we love the music. That's why. Lovely nursery music. Tinkling as we go. Earplugs, earplugs. We won't wear it all. Or we will be sentenced to a hundred days of Yankee. Tootie Frutal, sell it by the Oodle. Good humor, we love you. Yay. <laughs> well, that was fine. Just fine, man. <clears throat> you can tell a real G.H. man every time, I always say. You know, you don't eat our bars with your fingers. There's a stick to it. <laughs> well, man, that's the key to successful selling. Stick to it, right? <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yes, ice cream salesmen are the backbone of this nation, if you ask me. You men keep up the good work, and one day soon, I'll have your chimes tuned. <laughs> you see if I won't. Now, I won't hold you, because I know you're anxious to get out in the field. Bart, pardon me, Mr. Barr, sir. Well, Charlie Kranzmeyer, what is it? Uh, I've been on Pop Goes a Weasel for three weeks now. Oh, could I please trade with Jones here? He's got four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie. <laughs> you know the rules, Kranzmeyer. The cycle's eight weeks. I, I can't stand Pop Goes the Weasel. I come home at night, I can't sleep. All night long, I hear a penny for a spool of thread, a penny for a needle. I'm sick of it. Sick, sick, sick. <laughs> oh, now, let me have his song, sir. I, I like Pop Goes the Weasel, honestly. Nonsense. You. Pop Goes the Weasel is Kranzmeyer's assignment. Just for that outburst, Charlie, you can't have four and twenty blackbirds at all. When your time is up, you'll get the farmer in the dell. Not the farmer in the cell! I had that last cycle! Get 
get back in your seats there. Do we get here much or don't we? Well, well, we can talk about it. I mean, talk about it. Put me down. This is mutiny. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Oats, peas, beans, all nursery songs. Nuts. I am the laughing stock of Robbins, Feist, and Miller. I gotta get away from this. I'll just take a shortcut through the parking lot here. Hey, that's funny. Somebody left their motor running. What's this? Somebody bound and gagged in the front seat. Heavens to popsicles! FC, it's you! And somebody's tied greasy ropes around your nice brown suit. FC, that ain't no brown suit. You've been dipped. <laughs> Let me get that gag out of your mouth there. Oh, gee, boss, you got little bumps all over. You must be all pecan crunch underneath the chocolate. <laughs> Yes, for you, Charlie Krasmeyer, and thousands of ice cream men like you, courage is not a sometime thing, and a tin ear helps. <laughs> Salute you men in white coats. You're a brave and gallant bunch. You stand for right and liberty to say nothing of pecan. Thank you. Well, we hope you enjoyed our stirring documentary tonight, Uninterrupted Melody. Now, some folks might think this would be a good spot in the show for Peggy Taylor to sing. It is. She's going to sing not 79, not 81, but around the world in 80 days. Count them. Around the world I've searched for you. I traveled on when hope was gone to keep a rendezvous. I knew somewhere, sometime, somehow, you'd look at me and I would see the smile you're smiling now. It might have been Or gay Paris, or even London town. No more will I go all around the world, for I have found my world in you. Chez toi et sans espoir de rendez-vous, tout de même je compte ne. Je sais quelque part, quelque temps, quelque fois, vous me regardez et je vois votre assurance. Si l'heure aurait pu être county down Ou à New York, ou qu'à Paris, ou même à London Town Plus jamais irai jour à tout du monde Car j'ai trouvé mon monde
once again, it's time to meet our panel of experts who are back with us tonight as, uh, as we ran over two weeks ago and we did not finish our discussion. I'm glad uh, that you could be back with us, Dr. Linus Quoit. Thank you. It's nice being back. Mr. G.L. Spoon. Good evening, friends, in Radio Land. And finally, and finally, Mrs. Edna St. Louis, Missouri. The pleasure's all mine. Although it does seem to me I got second billing last time. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> After all, uh, I do have a master's degree in Tarzan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, indeed, Miss uh, Missouri. Well, be that it may, we're not going to bring up tonight any of the other things we discussed two weeks ago. For example, whether or not Often Annie has one red dress and one pair of long white cotton stockings that she washes daily and wears over and over, or many red dresses and many white cotton stockings. I know that one. Oh, Doctor, I know you do. Uh, I know you do. But I do we, know uh, that answer. Yes, I know you do. But we won't go into that, John. Huh? I didn't get a uh, yeah, doctor's uh, degree in Little Orphan Annie for nothing. <laughs> yes, well, uh, <laughs> well, Boy, uh, you know, this guy's really got the rub in that doctor's degree. Yeah, well, well shall, we, shall we move ahead well, to other questions? Oh, right, 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 right. But we uh, promised that. Yeah, I know we did. Now, shall we... Uh, well, you uh, promised, now you promised you gave me your word out in the hall before we went on the air that we wouldn't have any kind of discussion. Yes, huh? that's absolutely true. Oh, that's true. true. Let's Thank pass you. the peace pipe here, for goodness sake. Yeah. Now, I've received my master's degree in oh, Tarzan, boy. and you <laughs> insulted the ideal of my life when you said Tarzan was 72 years old and wore a hairpiece. Well, it does. I'll apologize if Mr. Spoon will. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, well, okay, look, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll take back what I said about uh, Tarzan's hairpiece. <laughs> if you you will apologize publicly for calling Dick Tracy a big jerk. Well, of <laughs> Mr. Tracy happens to be, and the biographers will agree, one of the greatest living American heroes. And he's just recovering from a severe head wound as well. <laughs> well, I, I'm terribly sorry. I, I apologize. Oh, I yes, do. indeed. Aren't we getting along famously here tonight? <laughs> oh, yeah. well, it's very nice of you. It's very nice. And believe me, Miss Missouri, <clears throat> I didn't mean to insult Tarzan. Between you and I... Uh, between you and me, Mr. Ooh, that education. <laughs> oh, that's rather nice of her to do that to Between you, you and I, he's a great ape man, and truthfully, if you didn't get right up there on the newspaper with a magnifying glass, you couldn't tell he wears a wig. <laughs> wears a wig? Yeah, he does wear a wig. Yeah. You should have as much hair on your bare skin rug. Oh, well, I don't think it's real. Listen, Listen, please, 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 people, 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 shall we simmer, simmer, simmer down the and belt. simmer, yeah. shall we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the hall, no more discussion. Put us on slow, <laughs> yeah, boy. Yeah, sorry. Please. Now we'll go to our first question tonight. Uh, it's uh, in Dick Tracy. Now, yeah. this is the question. Does or does not Junior wear a fright wig? Well, the answer to that has to be negative. Uh, negative. It's the boy's own hair, and it certainly doesn't take Dick Tracy to figure out where that question came from, Miss Missouri. Uh, I <laughs> beg your pardon, Mr. Spoon. I had nothing to do with that question. Oh, no, those, look, those questions... People, people, look, 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 Listen, people, people, yes. uh, be that as it may, it is a fright wig on the boy. It is not a fright wig on it's the boy. It's a fright Listen, wig. It is not. It's the uh, same uh, hair that any 12-year-old boy... 12-year-old boy? 12-year-old well, boy. Why, he's older than little orphan Annie. I think that is a personal front, madam. Stockings. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it. Please. We've been all through this. If anybody should be drawing Social Security, it's you and Tarzan. <laughs> should look that good in white cotton stocking. Yes. <laughs> Please, uh, watch, watch. Look, Junior, yes, the subject Spoon. is Junior, right? That, that's right. He's sir. a normal American boy that any mother would be proud to call her son. Mm. He's got a good head on his shoulders. He's an artistic boy as well. How many boys do you know who could sketch pictures for the crime lab like he does? Well, I, I, <laughs> I, I, don't make me, I, don't I, make I, me I, sick I, to I, my I, stomach. <laughs> you don't believe that you don't believe that kid really draws those pictures, do you? <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Listen, he's got a ghost uh, artist, and if he does draw him, I could take that cigar of yours and draw a better picture with the ash. <laughs> I could. Believe me, I could. Give it yeah. Yeah. Give it yeah. Gentlemen, we are having just a little bit of fun at the round table tonight, aren't we? Oh, <laughs> oh it's lots of fun. <laughs> I'd like to say it's Sandy. <laughs> Sandy, Sandy just, that just... idiot animal. Uh, uh, please. How would you like me to punch you in that big, fat, uneducated nose? Now, John, you please, now, let's, no, 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 let's move on oh, to the next subject now, huh, shall we? <laughs> all right, all right. Let's now, go, let's... Uh, could or could not Buck Rogers... 
defeat Flash Gordon in a ray gun fight. <laughs> Tarzan could make monkeys out of both of them. Let's take him against Punjab and Mr. Am with his disintegrator cane and it'd be a one-sided affair, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Listen, I, uh, I happen to live by the Dick Tracy Code, and we're here to stop ray gun fights, not to encourage them. <laughs> You're talking about a showdown in self-defense Tracy can wipe up Rogers, Gordon, Punjab, Sandy, and the antique ape man, oh! and he can do it with Cardooey under one arm and a bandaged head. Why, you Piper! Antique you are a Piper! Ape man. Well, thank you. Please leave. Just, 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 just
Yeah? So what, do you want to make a federal case out of it? <laughs> no, sir, we... We heard there was a dragon operating in this neighborhood. We just want to know if you've seen him. Sure, i seen him. Mm -hmm. Could you describe him for me? What's to describe? You see one dragon, you've seen them all. <laughs> Could you try and remember, sir, just for the record? We just want to get the facts. Well, he was, you know, he had orange polka dots. Yes, sir. Purple feet, breathing fire and smoke. Mm -hmm. And one big bloodshot eye right in the middle of his forehead and uh, like that. <laughs> Notice anything unusual about him? <laughs> no, he was just a run-of-mill dragon, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right, you can go now. Hey, 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 by the way, how are you gonna catch him? I thought you'd never ask. A dragon net. 3.05 p.m. I was riding back into the courtyard to make my report to the lab. Then it happened. It was a dragon. Hey, I'm the fire-breathing dragon. You must be St. George, right? Yes, sir. I see you got one of them new 45 caliber swords. That's about the size of it. <laughs> you slay me. That's what I want to talk to you about. What do you mean? I'm taking you in a 502. You figure it out. What's the charge? Devouring maidens out of season. <laughs> out of season? You never pin that rap on me? Do you hear me, cop? Yeah, I hear you. I got you in a 412, too. A 412? What's a 412? Overacting. <laughs> Let's go. September the 5th, the dragon was tried and convicted. His fire was put out and his maiden devouring license revoked. Maiden devouring out of season is punishable by a term of not less than 50 or more than 300 years. We're a little folks, so good night, late. I mean, uh, we're a little good night, so folks, late. We're a little, well, never mind. Until the next week, this is Stan Freeberg saying thanks for listening. God bless you and good night. The Stan Freeberg Show is produced in Hollywood by Pete Barnum and is written by Stan Freeberg, Pete Barnum, and Dawes Butler. Featuring the music of Billy May, Judd Conlon for the Mayors, and the songs of Peggy Taylor, with Doss Butler, Peter Lees, and June Perret. Bud Sewell speaking.